this is a review for the uh, the new Sea to Summit ultralight insulated sleeping mat. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm in the tent now. I've um, set the uh, the Sea to Summit ultralight insulated mat up. Uh, I've just inflated it with the the valve at the top just there. You can inflate this one by mouth. Uh, it's got something that uh, no other mat I've seen has listed as a feature. It's got an antimicrobial uh, treatment on the inside um, to protect the, the plastic um, and to protect the insulation um, fr from your breath. So typically if you've got an insulated mat and you breathe inside it, eventually you'll get damp build up and, and mildew growing. Um, and I've got an example of that that I'll flash on screen just now. Aside from that, it's quite easy to inflate. It uh, took maybe five or six breaths, but you can get um, a pump that's like a little adapter for a, a dry bag. I'll show you that valve in a little bit more detail later on. <clears throat> so yeah, the main feature of this mat is obviously the, the design of it, the way that the, the air chambers are laid out. It's, it's, it's a new design, it's, it's not copied by anybody at the moment. It works on all these individual air pockets just here. There's a couple of different models that are set up differently in that respect, but this particular one, um, they're, they're uniform all the way through the mat, so from the top end to the bottom end, they're all the same thickness. First thoughts, it is quite comfortable. As I'm leaning on it with my elbow here now, I'm not sort of sinking down with the, the entirety of my arm. You know, putting, putting weight down in that area, it's only going down in that area. It's not sort of, I'm not cascading down like you would do with... Um, a mat that's got vertical baffles for example or vertical um, air chambers. Another good point about this particular mat is it's it's slightly siliconized on the surface of the top and also underneath to stop you from rolling around um, so we'll, we'll see how we get on with that during the night see if that affects how easily I get to sleep. It's um, a tapered design so it starts off slightly wider up at the head end and the shoulders narrows off down towards the feet um, I, I'm a side sleeper usually so I, I should be all right with this. I'm gonna get off and cook some food, spend a bit of tent time because we've got a bit of rain and uh, I'll get back to you later on when I get in the sleeping bag. So uh, I've just uh, just got up briefly and, and gone outside, gone to the toilet, uh, so I thought I'd give a, a quick few comments on uh, on the mat so far. Obviously I'm lying on it right now. It's comfortable it is my first, uh, my first impression, it's really comfortable. Um, I was a little bit concerned at first because it is quite thin, uh, but it supports the weight really well. I mean, I'm not overly heavy, I suppose, but it's supporting me really well. Um, I've, I've rolled around a little bit just to try out the design of these individually um, chambered uh, air sprung cells. Uh, they're supposed to move independently of one another, so it helps when you're moving around a lot and you're putting more pressure over, over sort of one area, like with your hip or with your elbow, for example. Um, it's supposed to stop you from sinking right down in in the mat uh, and touching the touching the floor underneath and I've found that that's actually happened <coughs> um, it's noticeable a lot when I move onto my hip I move onto my side and and, and spread the weight of my hip um, my hip joint and uh, it's really beneficial because I'm a side sleeper so I can see that being uh, ongoing being a, go a good feature for me one other thing I've noticed as well is uh, and I've heard this mentioned before with similar mats that have um, like a, a bonded um, foil or a bef uh, sort of a bonded reflective material on the inside of the, uh, the chambers uh, and I've been told that y you can feel the warmth being reflected back at you and it, it, I was dubious uh, I must admit and this is the first mat I've used personally with that sort of technology uh, within it and, and I, I can certainly vouch for that with so, this mat. Uh, I've just woken up after a Spending a night on the Sea to Summit ultralight insulated mat, and uh, had, a, had a pretty decent night of sleep, really, overall. It's comfortable, um, which, as I said last night, I think I was, I was a little bit dubious about with it being um, such a thin mat. Um, mats I've used before have sometimes been thicker, uh, which I, I took to maybe mean that they'd be a lot more comfortable. And um, there's not been much of a noticeable difference between, say, a seven centimetre 
thick sleeping mat like the the Xped, uh, the Xped uh, Sinmat UL7, which I've used quite heavily, and and this thing. Obviously, a lot of that might be down to the design, as I was saying last night. These individual air sprung cells move independently of each other, so uh, it sort of contours the shape of your body. So, where I'm putting pressure down, you can't really see it very well on video, but where I'm putting pressure down with my elbow here, where my arm runs along, that's still supported. It's only where my elbow is that's moving slightly downwards. Uh, which also helps to to stop you from touching the floor as well in 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 any re you know in any real area. So one thing I did find is that if you sink into these little holes here, like there was one point where it was before I went to sleep, but I, I sunk my elbow into one of these holes and I went straight down to the ground. This particular model, they go all the way through these um, these little spaces in between the pockets of that, so I felt a little bit cold then. Uh, there's one interesting thing to show you uh, at, the, at the head end of this mat and that's the valve so the valve here as you can see there's an inflate and there's also a deflate tab as I showed earlier but I neglected to mention this little bit on the inside of the inflate pad if you're not quite a fan of having a fully insulated mat which I am to be fair, so I didn't utilise this too much, but I had a little bit of a fiddle around to see how well it did. You can press that button there, and that lets a little bit of air out. Lets a little bit of air out, so you can sort of dial in how soft the pad is. So that was our first look review of the Sea to Summit Ultralight Insulated Sleeping Mat. I've got to say, after spending the night on the mat, it wins for me on two counts. It was definitely very warm and it was definitely comfortable. The temperature overnight got down to about 0 degrees C, maybe a couple of degrees below, but I still didn't feel any cold spots creeping up through the mat. The air sprung cell idea seems to work in the way it's intended. Any time I rolled over onto my side, I didn't sink down into the mat at all and uh, I still remained comfortable. Another big plus point on this mat for me is the antimicrobial treatment on the inside of the mat. It meant that I could blow it up by mouth and it probably means that going forward you shouldn't have to fork out for the extra inflating pump. We'd like to thank Cotswold Outdoor for providing this item for our review. The review was independent and any views and opinions contained within this video are our own. You can find a link to this item on the Cotswold Outdoor website on screen now or in the description below.